Greetings and salutations, this is Imperator Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello. Today we're having a look, at, a look at our second batch of Persian Immortals. Uh, these chaps are in predominantly in red with um, green trousers and yellow hat. And a green shield. And a uh, green and black shield, yeah. Uh, a green, white and black shield with green. I just thought they looked quite cool, this particular look out. Uh, so this is the second of our two Persian regiments so far that we've done. So comments? Look pretty good. Hmm. That it? I've got questions but we're not doing questions yet. No we're not, no we're not. Right so um, the officer is this chap here. He has a nice officer's coat and he looks quite cool. Um, this guy, this is the kind of outfit used by the um, later Immortals or the earlier Immortals, I'm not sure which way around it is. Uh, but all these figures are from Wargames Foundry. If you watched our previous video, I went into a lot more detail on that. And, well, that's basically it really, because I, I went through the information before on, on the actual figures and stuff, so Let's move straight on to questions, shall we? Alright. How come the flag man? Yeah. How come his top of his cap's blue? It's just a cap. Well, the rest of the regiment is just in normal cloth. Yeah, it's just, just a cap in the middle. It's just a different type of hat. And why does it have that shield? Uh, because he might get shot. So he's just carrying a small shield. It's just a small shield and it's uh, done, up, done up in the same colours as the regiment. I just thought he'd look good with a shield, that's all. Okay. Um, how come some of the men have armour and others don't? Ah, that was actually deliberate on my part. Um, because they weren't all... Um, some of the men would have maybe a little bit of their own income a little bit of their own money, and so they would buy some additional armour while on campaign. Uh, normally you wouldn't need it, but while on campaign, especially when you're fighting Greeks, it's kind of a good idea to up armour. Um, what you could do is get all the figures and make one entire regiment wearing the uh, fish scale armour that they've got here, or you could have them um, mixed up, and what I did, I mixed them up, basically. Uh, typically, immortals are made up of um, actual Persians. Uh, Non-Persians weren't allowed to join the immortals. But you, as the campaign went on, I'm sure they would have ended up having troops from other areas come in. Certainly, given how many immortals died during the war. They yeah. had a really bad name, really. They weren't that immortal. Yeah, but you had so many of them that you just replaced them, no one notices. Yeah, um, during the during from uh, Thermopylae, uh, did I mention this in the last video? Um, after the first attack went in, um, they sent Medes in first, first, who are light infantry, armed with a shield very much like this one, made out of wicker. Yeah, and, yeah, I mentioned this. And, and some would have spear, but most would have axes and very short swords. And they were sent in to attack the Spartans first, or the Greeks first. Um, and the Xerxes was really overconfident, he actually gave them orders to bring back the Spartans as prisoners so he could interrogate them, which is a bit stupid, I don't think he knew who he was fighting against. Um, and the Medes got cut to pieces, so he got quite annoyed at that and he immediately sent the Immortals in, which was a mistake. You, you should hold the guard back until the end of the battle really. But he sent them in, in the second wave, which wasn't a good idea. And also, given that so many immortals died, it kind of took out the spirit to fight for the rest of the army. And after the battle, um, he blindfolded his troops to match them past the dead. Because he didn't want the troops to see all the dead bodies. Okay. Because it would be really bad for their morale. It's bad for their morale that they can't see. Yeah, but to walk through piles and piles and piles of dead Persians 
um, when you're invading a country and you're just really on the at this point you're on the outskirts of the country you're invading so what's it going to be like when you get further in didn't really matter because the Greeks evacuated yeah and would later get their own back at the oh what was the battle begins with a P Plataea the Battle of Plataea next question um, uh, you know, they're in blue, the other ones. Yeah, this regiment. Yeah. yeah. And they're in red. Are they their town colours or something? Um, oh, I would assume that the local regiment, uh, each individual regiment would have the same stores, its own supply. And so I would assume, very much like the Roman legions, the legion will be kitted out. Um, by an overseer paid for by the state would give him money and the overseer would kit them out with equipment. Um, I'm not I'm I'm not entirely sure with the Persian Empire, but I would assume that that's the way it went. Kind of makes sense. They were a very organised empire, so it made sense to differentiate between regiments. Okay. I mentioned the guy with the clipboard earlier, didn't I? Uh, in the last video. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, someone would stand and, and mark down which, which regiment had done really well and they'd, they'd get a sticker at the end of the battle. Rewarded with, like, bad stuff. Well, it depends where the regiment came from. They could be awarded with slaves. They could be awarded with gold. I don't know. I don't know what they did. They're stupid. Why? They just reward everyone, didn't they, really? It's your army. You've got to keep your army morale up. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you do want the regiments who fight the best to um, want to fight better. And so getting laurels for your battles. Um, Maybe then if, if they do keep that, keep that system, but get them better armour. So your, be your best fighting men have armour. The people that aren't as good as them will want to fight better because they have better gear than them. Oh, well, that's the thing. Um, the... Later on in the Persian Empire, the best troops were the cavalry, and they were heavily armoured. They were armoured head to toe, the horses were armoured, everything was armoured. Uh, but the infantry generally wasn't, because you have to walk huge distances when you're Persia. You have huge areas to cover, and that's a lot of armour and stuff you need to keep repairing. If you walk a lot, long distance in armour, your armour's going to fall apart. I guess so. So, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly guessing here, but um, the Romans were a bit different because they, they had their own workshops and stuff. Um, I'm not really sure how easy it would be for all these different nationalities who were part of the Persian Empire to run the same system that the Romans had because they were not one organised one organized people, if you get me. Yeah. Uh, when you joined the Persian, the, when you joined the Persian Empire, you didn't become Persian. You stayed whatever you were. So the Babylonians were still Babylonians. The Egyptians are still Egyptians. And so they wore Egyptian uniforms, Egyptian equipment, or whatever passed for an Egyptian uniform, um, Egyptian shields. Um, the Phoenicians would have done the same. It, 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 it's the Greeks. Uh, of course, the Greeks in the Persian army fought using. Lamellar armour with a Greek shield and a Greek spear, and they fought in phalanx. So it would be really hard to go to the Greeks who were fighting for you and say, Right, now you've got to wear a pair of pyjamas, a bit of fish scale armour, and a big wicker shield. Because the Greeks would get, tell you to get stuffed. Yeah. And likewise, if the Egyptians are going to turn up and say, I want a really long eight foot spear, please, because that's what those Greek guys have the Persians are going to be, well, no, you're not having one because it would cost too much. Yeah. Yeah, you're allies. Just just be allies. That's it. Also, the, the, the each individual city-state was... Oh, not city-state. Um, each individual province of the Persian Empire was an independent province. It had its own government. It has its own army. It had its own taxes and everything. So it was it was wildly independent compared to something like the Roman Empire. 
he was very much like a bigger version of the Greek city-states, except they were under one command. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard about the cats? No. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you this one. When the Persians invaded um, Egypt, do you want the full story? Yeah, sure. Okay, the Persian king um, wanted to marry the um, king of Egypt's daughter, because he quite liked her. But the king of Egypt didn't want him to marry his daughter because he figured all she'd be as another, um, another lady in his harem. He didn't think she'd be important enough. Uh, so he sent someone else's daughter, dressed up as her, thinking he wouldn't know the difference. But he figured it out and he went to war with Egypt. And the Egyptians had a huge army and it was home field advantage. So in order to fight, the Persians painted cats on their shields. Well, cats on the front of their shields because cats were worshipped in Egypt. So they drew cats on the shield and they carried boxes of cats and they threw the cats at the Egyptians. So the elite Egyptian army wouldn't fight, he just stood there and refused to fight because they were being attacked by men with cats on their shield. And they were all murdered. That's ridiculous. Yes, it is ridiculous and it's a show that how religion can hold you back a bit. No, like, no, like, is, the elite army should never be that pro-religious. You yeah, everybody was. That's a bad idea. Yeah, everyone was. Um, in the, back then, everyone was religious. That's like saying point. I'm going to dress up as Jesus and walk towards the British lines and I won't get shot at. I don't see how that would cover. I mean, why, why would dressing up as Jesus affect anything? Because what should Jesus, you should shoot the Son of God, would you? Yeah, but it wouldn't be the Son of God. It depends what kind It'd of... It would be a dude dressed as Jesus, it wouldn't be the same thing. The cats worshipped an animal, or uh, an animal which was a representation of one of their gods. So, it's not the same. You, you, you Fair can't... enough. You can't really put Christianity up against the Egyptian belief system. It's a completely different kind of thing. I mean, Christian soldiers did march into battle with uh, fish on their shields early on, which was a symbol of Christianity at the time. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, any more questions? Or no. Was that... Right, uh, that's the end of the... Um... Infantry I'm going to show you so far for the Persians. I have cavalry to show you next, which would be quite fun. Um, and some Persian command, which would also be quite fun. Uh, then we'll go on to the Greeks. Yay. You're just looking forward to the Spartans, aren't you, really? Well, it depends, really. Or which side are you going to take, Spartan or Athens? Well, Athens. They well, won. Well, they lost the... The Empire, Empire, Empire. War, they won. So. No, they lost the Peloponnesian War. For the one. No, they lost. They won the war all the way through until the end, and they lost. The Spartans won. Um, technically. Spartans won. It's a bit more complicated than that. It might change. I just go to where was winning. It is isn't really a matter of like Second World War. Who won, Russia or Germany? That's, we know who won there, it's pretty obvious, but it's not that easy with the Peloponnesian War. I think Britain won. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, 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 we, we, we won the war, there you go. Mm. Um, so that's it, thank you very much for watching, and over to him for the outro. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe, and comment down below what you think of the Persian infantry. We wicked shields. That's it for me. And that's it from him. Goodbye.